Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. Now I have to tell you, the thumbnail is catchy, the title is catchy, but I promise you it's not clickbait. I have got some valuable information to share with you about eBay buying and selling. Information that I did not know that if I had known could have saved me from the situation I found myself in a few days ago. So if you haven't watched my most recent video regarding an eBay authenticity fail or a miss, you must watch it because it turns out I was wrong because eBay, in fact, did not miss anything. And I just didn't understand the authenticity program as much as I should have. And I think a lot of folks out there don't understand it either. And so... I'm going to get into that in just a moment, but first I want to show you my bag of the day, which is the beautiful Dior Caro bag in the rust color. I went to a fundraiser last night for a battered women's and children's shelter that we have here locally, and the outfit I wore last night coordinated with this bag, and I'll go ahead and put it in here so you can see what I'm talking about. I actually turned out to be underdressed because I did choose to wear jeans and a lot of people were in semi-formal attire, but there were people in jeans and jean jackets, so I wasn't too out of place. Anyhow, whenever I move into a bag, I often will coordinate my outfit to that bag for a day or two or three, and that's what I'm doing right now because I realized once again how much I love this beautiful Caro bag, and I love the rust color. Now, at the benefit I went to, they do something special every year. It's basically like goodie bags, but they're not really goodie bags like everybody gets them. It's a tiered system of three different levels of handbags, and they are by a brand called Urban Expressions. And I get nothing for talking about Urban Expressions, but I wanted to give them a shout out because they donate a whole slew of bags every year to this fundraiser for the Battered Women and Children's Shelter. And part of what they donate is for the goodie bags. And then the volunteers who work for this event go to local businesses and ask for donations. And for me, I like to go and buy these goodie bags more than I like to buy some of the other auction items. There are a lot of different items available for auction at the event I went to. And mostly it's contemporary brands. They do raffle off a high-end luxury bag. And last night it was a Louis Vuitton. But for me, it's in the goodie bags. So I got there early and I was able to get two of them. And it was these two. So these two bags were $225 each. You can go to urbanexpressions.com and get them for $100 each. And if you sign up for their emails, you can get 25% off. And it's not the bag that you're necessarily paying for. You're getting a bunch of like gift cards inside. I got a bunch of things and a couple of like products like candle and bath soaps and stuff like that inside of these two bags. And I thought this one was really cute. All of Urban Expressions bags are made out of vegan leather or other materials. They're completely vegan. And so I picked this one because I'm not crazy about vegan leather. And I liked that this one was like a canvas type material with like a texture to it. And it sort of gives you that Hermes look with the way it fastens. That said, opening and closing a bag like this with an Hermes type closure is somewhat of a nightmare. I am glad to know because now it further confirms my opinion that I will never ever ever probably buy an Hermes bag that has that type of closure. This one does have a strap and I just thought how perfect would this be for like a beach side cafe or something where, you know, you were going to be around salt air and you were worried about your higher end or contemporary bags that this would be a perfect bag for that type of scenario. And so I thought it was really cute and it's very sturdy feeling, but yet still lightweight. And so this one's called the Dixie. I'll link the Urban Expressions website down below. This one's called the Breakaway Bag and it's nylon, I think. And then it also has just a tiny bit of the PU trim, but I liked it because it was very little PU. It's mostly just nylon, which is a material I like for handbags or belt bags. And this particular one, it comes with a zipped top. It has some pockets on the inside, a little, zip pouch that you could put items in. I thought it would be handy to put my glasses in that little pouch, but 
It's got a smooth zipper and it will fold up really, really small, like in a checked bag or something. And I actually put my Caro in it last night to protect it whenever I was eating. And then I carried my Caro out in this bag and it was wonderfully comfortable on the shoulder. So I just wanted to give Urban Expressions a quick shout out because they donate so many bags to this fundraiser every year. And I do think that both of these bags are really nice. This one's $100 too, but again, with the 25% off you could get, it would be 75. So pretty good deal. So I mentioned at the start that I learned some stuff about eBay's authenticity program that I didn't know before. And it is pretty critical to know these things to have the highest probability of success when you buy pre-loved on eBay or if you buy new on eBay. So when a seller goes to classify, whether their product is new or pre-loved, that is a point of extreme importance. If the seller classifies the item as brand new and it is part of the eBay authenticity program, which to qualify for, if you're a handbag, it's over $500 and certain brands, most brands when you think about it, but there's a list on eBay you can find about which brands are included. So if you see a handbag that's more than 500 that's not included, it could be because it's not one of the brands covered by the program, or it could be because of where it's located internationally in relation to you. So let's just assume that the item is located in the same country as you and the seller selects that it is brand new. If the seller does not mention any particular defects in the listing, if there is the tiniest mark or imperfection on the bag, eBay authentication is going to find it and reach out to the buyer to ask them if they want to continue with the sale. And if the buyer says no, they just return it to the seller and refund the buyer immediately. If for some reason eBay misses something in this whole process, you would be able to go ahead and return the item for that reason as well. But it's unlikely they're going to miss something because they do inspect with magnification and they find things that probably you you or the seller would never even know was there if it weren't for them. If the seller chooses to mark the item as pre-loved, they can classify it as in excellent use condition or very good use condition and not mention defects. So in the case of the Nikki bag that I opened a few days ago, that bag had what I considered to be some pretty glaring imperfections in terms of scuffs on the YSL on the front and corner wear. But the seller was not obligated to specify those things because the item was considered pre-loved or pre-owned. And eBay looked at it and they determined that it was still in excellent condition and so it passed. Now, do I agree with their assessment that it was in excellent condition considering that wear that wasn't pictured or described? I don't, but they have a very generous return policy if you find something that you feel doesn't match the description if the item is pre-loved. So all I had to do was say that the item did not match the description and a return is immediately generated. Now, if the item was brand new, it wouldn't be quite so easy or certain. Since the item was pre-owned, I was able to get that return label generated. The item will go directly back to eBay. And this is where it gets pretty interesting. When I called or when I talked to eBay, the gal I spoke to told me that all of the things that I mentioned as not matching the description, eBay had noted in the file on this particular bag. So they had already written down that there was wear to the YSL and corner wear. And so when the seller said that she didn't cause that damage, well, eBay saw it before they sent it to me and it's noted. So as long as I didn't inflict any additional damage to the bag before eBay gets it back, I am good to go. And I was basically assured that I would get my full refund. Many of you out there and I myself have had situations where I've been contacted about a tiny imperfection. And most of the time, that is because the item was marked brand new. Not always because the bag that I talked about that had the stain inside, I don't 
I don't remember if it was marked brand new. It may have been. Sometimes sellers will mark an item as brand new and then they'll say only wore twice, but because they categorized it that way, it's going to be analyzed more strictly. And that may have been what happened whenever I had that bag with the stain inside. But what the eBay rep told me today is that if an item is marked brand new, if there is anything at all that's not noted in the description, then eBay is going to give the buyer a call and you're going to have an option to refuse it if they don't refuse it for you because they take that brand new categorization extremely seriously. So whenever you're shopping on eBay, if you want to have the item looked over with an even finer tooth comb, you need to go into filter and sort out for just new items because those items are going to be looked at in a little bit more critical way, only in the sense that you will be contacted if the description and the item don't match up. Now, eBay is going to look at all the items in a very critical way. It's just some of them may get sent on to you with defects that aren't mentioned if they're pre-loved or pre-owned. This is something I totally didn't understand when I purchased the Nikki bag. I looked at the listing, there were 20 photos, the buyer had 100% positive feedback, and I looked at her description, she wrote in the description EUC, which means excellent use condition, and she wrote hairline scratches on the magnetic clasp. And by magnetic clasp, it didn't mean this part, it meant this part right there and she put a picture of it in the listing showing the hairline scratches on the magnetic clasp and i could see that on the magnetic clasp and so i thought oh she's being so specific to note these hairline scratches that she would surely point out anything like corner wear or destruction to the ysl and I looked at all the corners in her photos. I looked at the YSL and you couldn't see anything in terms of wear. But when eBay received it and they looked at it, they noted everything I saw when I opened the box. They determined, however, in their calculation that it was still excellent use condition. They weren't obligated to return it to the seller because the item was marked pre-loved. And I'm not sure if they even took the EUC into consideration because that's an abbreviation and not everybody may know what that means. And it's not like it's a marker in terms of eBay definitions by any means. If the seller who sold me the Nikki had said the item was new, they would have reached out to me and said, there's wear on the front plate, there's corner wear. Do you want us to send it to you anyway? And they would have even sent me pictures and I would have said no, because I don't want corner wear. I just made the mistake of figuring if the seller took the time to tell me something so specific about the snap that they would disclose other things as well. And I wasn't too worried about the fact that her photographs were a little on the darker side and had a little bit of blurring because it seemed like she was being so upfront about such a minor thing as a snap scratch. Now, in hindsight, I kind of feel like the seller was trying to pull the wool over my eyes, but having said that, whenever I was not a handbag collector, I used to have coach bags and they would have corner wear on them. And I didn't know that they had corner wear on them until I went to sell them through Facebook Marketplace and I took pictures and I looked at them and thought, huh, how did that happen? Like I had no idea. I never even looked at them to figure out if I was putting wear and tear on them. I just carried the bags into the ground. And when I looked at what this seller had sold in the past, she had sold almost entirely clothes. She had sold one coach travel size bag and then this bag, at least in terms of items that she was given feedback on. Now she may have had sales of other handbags where she wasn't given feedback, but of the items I was able to look at, it was all like clothing and shoes. So people treat those items and analyze them differently oftentimes than they would a handbag, especially a high price, high end designer handbag. So ways I could have avoided the situation I find myself in. And basically all the situation is, is that I have to wait for a refund and I had to receive the item and then ship it back. 
ways I could have avoided that would have been to ask more questions. If I would have asked her, is there anywhere at all on this bag other than the hairline scratches on the snap? And I would have went so far as to be more specific with known issues that I know about with the Nikki bag, including where to the YSL and where to the corners. If I would have specifically said, is there any spot on the bag where the exterior part of the finish is worn through, particularly on the corners. I also could have said, is there anywhere to the YSL on the front where the color of the bag has been rubbed off, chipped off, anything like that? Then she would have hopefully taken the time to look at it and tell me honestly if there was anything like that. I would have also couched my questions in that I would return the item if those things were there. And so I wanted to ask ahead of time to avoid wasted time on both of our parts. And most of the time, the seller is not going to try to trick you if they are aware of the consequences of sending you something that you don't want. The fact that eBay with pre-owned merchandise allows returns for pretty much any reason makes it even trickier because as a buyer of a pre-owned item, if I find anything that doesn't match the description on that bag, I can get a return, even if the seller has a no returns policy. Now that's not the same with brand new items. With a brand new item, there shouldn't be anything that doesn't match the description because it's brand new and that's the difference. So if a seller is selling a brand new item and says no returns, as long as that item passes through eBay's hands and they confirm it's brand new, then you can't return it. But with pre-owned, it's all subjective. And so it's a lot easier for a buyer to return a pre-loved or pre-owned item than it is for them to return an item marked brand new. So what does this mean to you as a seller? Well, this is what it means. You are still, I think, more protected on the eBay platform than most of the other ones out there besides Fashion File, but they give you such terrible prices for most of the bags. I think eBay is an awesome place to sell handbags that are over $500. As a seller, as long as you are extremely forthcoming about everything to do with your bag, any defects, you picture them, you lay them out in text, then I think it's still a safe way to sell. May you still have some returns? Yes, you might, but that's going to be true with any platform. Whether you're doing PayPal invoice, Poshmark, Mercari, you know, Facebook group selling, which would be PayPal invoice, any of these platforms tend to side on the buyer's side. But what is different about eBay is they inspect that item when it comes back to them and they have all these detailed notes and probably pictures too to confirm that the buyer didn't do anything to your bag. And if they did, they get to keep it. So that is why I like eBay for sellers so much in addition to buyers. Yes, there may be some hassle involved, but there is hassle involved in buying and selling pre-loved items and in brand new items. I have shown you repeatedly over the course of my channel that buying pre-loved is a hassle, but I've also shown you that buying brand new is a hassle too. I have bought brand new bags from Louis Vuitton with issues. I've bought brand new bags from Coach with issues. It's not exclusive to luxury or contemporary or brand new or pre-owned. You're going to have issues no matter where you go when you're buying and selling online. I think the safest thing to do is to go in person to buy things where you can have it in your hands. But even then, in the excitement of the moment, you miss things. I read about what people say all the time when they were in the Louis Vuitton boutique and they didn't notice some defect until they got home because they were excited. They had the endorphins rushing through their body and they just didn't see that pop stitch or you know, the lighting didn't show that smudge or whatever. And they got it into daylight and they could see this thing that they couldn't see. So in all reality, you just have to be prepared to lick your items over carefully, be patient and willing to wait if there is some issue 
for that issue to be resolved. I did also find out some interesting things about international purchasing and selling. So I have an item on the way from abroad and some purchases from abroad will go through eBay's authenticity program and some of them will go through their money back guarantee program. So this item is going through eBay's money back guarantee program. And so if I get it and there's something wrong with it or it's not authentic, then I initiate a return on eBay. It's at the seller's expense to give me a shipping label to return that item. And if they won't do that, then eBay will step in and do it for them. And I don't anticipate any issues with this particular item. It's brand new. I don't have to quibble with the seller about anything because it's listed as brand new. And so anything that is wrong with it, I have a leg to stand on. And let me just tell you, I'm super excited about this item and I can't wait to share it with you. I got it after I sold the Coach Mira bundle and another item and I'm just patiently waiting. It's taking a while, but it is coming. The seller took like a week to ship it because of the Easter holiday. And so when I get it, I will share it with you. I was also looking at another item after the Nikki bag fell through that was international in Japan. And Japan's handbags are now also going through eBay's authenticity program in a lot of cases. And this bag would have went through that program. It was marked pre-owned and the Japanese seller or the seller from Japan they indicated it had a perfume odor. And this is something I'm worried about because I'm sensitive to certain scents. So if it came to me and it was strong or a scent that just didn't agree with me, which is what happens to me in a lot of cases, then I would have a problem. And since they did disclose that it does have a perfume odor, I don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable returning it if the odor just didn't agree with me. I asked them to try to describe it, and I mean, that's so hard to do. And so I ended up deciding to pass on it. But I did find out that with regards to duties and customs charges on eBay, that they are now offering you the option to pay those ahead of time. And for this item, I think it would have been like $131 to pay it ahead of time. If I waited and didn't pay them ahead of time, then it might have got stopped at U.S. Customs, at which point I would have been assessed the same fee, $131.25 or whatever it was. So there's not really much of an advantage to pay that early, except for if the carrier charges a fee to collect that customs. And with DHL, they do charge a fee. And I don't know the exact fee, but I was told it might be like $15 to $30 roughly. And so if you pay it early, you may avoid that fee. If you don't pay it early, you may end up paying $15 to $30 more. However, if you don't pay your customs early, you may not get charged those customs at all. So you might save the $131.25. I thought this was pretty fascinating. Now, with the bag that I have coming that I did purchase from abroad, its value was a little bit less than the United States threshold for charging customs on an incoming item. The value that they start to assess customs over is $800. However, this item after the taxes was over $800. So I asked this rep, I said, will I be charged on the amount with the taxes or the amount without the taxes? And she couldn't answer that question. She thought it was the amount before the taxes. My next question is, is why do I pay customs if I'm also paying taxes? And the answer to that question was, the taxes are more of a state thing, a state imposed fee that eBay is charging you. And the customs, of course, are federal. If I did have to do a return on the item that I have coming, I don't know if I would be fully reimbursed for the customs fees since I'm going separately through DHL or the federal government versus doing it all within eBay. And I also don't know if I was doing it within eBay, if I would be refunded that amount. I do think there's probably a better chance that I would get all of my money back if I pre-purchased the duties and paid them right at the start.
because then eBay would be in control of the whole thing as opposed to having DHL in control of the duties portion of it. So the phone call I had was fascinating. I just talked and talked and talked with her because I had a real person on the phone and I asked her every question I could think of. If you can think of any other questions, please ask down below in the comment section. I may have talked to her about something and then completely forgot to say it in the video. And if that's the case, I may be able to answer. If not, there may be somebody else that is reading the comments as well who can answer on my behalf, which I would welcome. If you like this video and found it at all helpful, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so that you are notified of future exciting content such as this. Also, go find me on Instagram. The name there is the same. It's the at symbol, then the handbag housewife, all lowercase. You can DM me there or you can email me at thehandbaghousewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye.